so okay, I see you. I think you were not there the other day, right? Yes, yes. Like oh, you, you went to Disney. Sorry, everybody coming face. You saw my kids running around. Okay, today no kids. The other day, passing reminded me to look at their yeah, visa document. It was a weekend, and my in law was actually I want to make it to my last place, but we went down, so no choice. So, the rest of you have never done curriculum review before. Okay, next question How many of you are program on Vegas? No. If you are following, you will speak guidelines, you will speak guidelines. 
you should do a curriculum review for the master courses, master courses which finish in one year, master by, uh, master by course, and makes more than whatever, just finish one year, in three years time. In this university required, okay, three years. Most programs should do curriculum within five years. Three, I mean, undergraduate programs five years. Okay, clear? This university requirement. However, I must say it's not true. Why? If you look at the fundamental of curriculum, it should be done in a complete cycle. The program finish one cycle, then you do a curriculum. So the, the cycle of curriculum review is actually six years. If you are from medic, medic is a five years program. Law is a five years program. That was four years. Program. Four years. So any five years program you couldn't do in five years because your your hot is that finish. You know you know what I'm saying? The logic of a curriculum review is for a hot to finish, or hot to finish, then you start to win. Then you only decide to right? So it's a success. But of course, for master program, one year, one plus one is going to be too short, too fast. There's another school of thought on how people should do curriculum review is, yes, five years or four years or whatever, we should have a mid review. You know, it's two years. Okay? Another timing for curriculum review is for those who are professional program manager, program standards. Professional programs, especially professional programs. In the good old days, they say 120 credit hours. Then certainly they surpass them. And then you do a curriculum review with 130 credit hours. Clear? Yeah? Certainly, out of the blue, a new program that then comes up and says it was 135 credit hours. So you are saying, university says I should do it in five years' time. True? I just finish doing it. <coughs> professional body says grace period one year. Usually professional program will give you a grace period of one year or two years maximum. So basically, after two years, when they come and visit your accreditation in four years time, and you're still putting 130, you have failed accreditation. All your graduates will not be recognized. Yeah? So, the people the three years, five years rule does not, it's completely overruled. It's immediate effect. Clear? Okay, clear? So that is uh, timing of business. Next thing we need to talk about is who is really in charge of curriculum review in the web? Do you know who's in charge of curriculum review? Who's the body or center in charge of curriculum review? Right. ASP center. And there's a lot of resources available on curriculum review inside the UM portal. All of you have can access your portal, right? They go in the chain. Okay? Just to clarify something. <coughs> ASP Center is the one who's doing curriculum review. They are handling it with support from QMAC. We support here. We support by reading through the document, uh, the forms. Uh. Over here, I'll show you briefly what a curriculum review timeline looks like. Okay? For those of you. Uh, those of you done curriculum review, is a timeline something like this? Yes? No? Don't know. No idea. No, no problem. Because it took me some time to group it up like this. Okay? Or maybe you don't really understand how I group it up. So I'm making the first assumption. You have a team that has been formed. Here, you cannot say, no, curriculum review, I'm the boss, I don't trust anyone, I'm a road ranger, I'm doing alone. It's not allowed. You know why? It's clearly stated in some arahan schedule or some requirement that you need a team. And the team, the head is going to be the head of the department. It's going to be the chairman. The head of the department must be the chairman. If you know the head of the department chairman, you better go for some good justification. There's going to be a senior member, a junior member, Member is, let's say, under five years or things like this. They, they, they put it down to the points. A senior member, a junior member, alumni, I think even with the uh, industry. That is called a curriculum review committee. Here. 
Of course, you can add more, not a problem, not a problem. But those requirements you need to do. But of course, if you're talking about new program, yes, you don't have other nine. You got it. It's this curriculum development. Okay, I'm making the assumption that team has been formed, and I'm giving you some time. First, you start, you have to set the outcomes. We talk about today effective curriculum review, outcomes based approach. Here, outcome based approach, we start out most important outcomes. Okay. I put down there one to two months. What is typically being done by a lot of people is oh, somebody says we must have this outcome, must follow MQA outcomes, uh, the, the, eight, uh, the five clusters and sub clusters, so I must have APLO, so I have to be right now. True, true, true. Wrong. It's completely wrong. I'll show you the detail of what is going to be about. That is what is solely missing in a lot of programs. Here, solely completely missing. I cannot find that at all. Because if you have a proper outcomes, everything will come into place. We are Korean language, right? I will use that as expected. I hope that when I talk about your your language, your cost. Please don't, I mean, uh, if I'm something wrong, <laughs> yes. <laughs> because I'm using her as a point of example, because it's going to be new to me, okay. So set the outcomes. After you set the outcomes, you set the guidelines. Okay, you set the guidelines. And once guidelines have been done, guidelines move to set the top management, the so-called top management of this regular review. Making amendments is where all the lectures will be one to one. Clear? It's up to you how you want to model your team. You can put in the whole team together in the second outcomes, in the second guidelines, and so on and so forth. But I'm just showing that if you don't want to involve everybody, there's just too many staff in your program, then the upper two is top management do. There's maybe some support up to you how you're modeling. Making amendments is all that just want. Okay, clear? And checking is, of course, it can be everybody involved or the top management involved. Clear? So I'm putting one to two months, one to two months, one to two months. It's up to you how fast you are going to go. Okay? And then, and, okay. This target, although you can see four to months, uh, it's not finished. Uh, exclude the other form of approvals. Once this document is completed, you need the approval of, let's say, the Jatan Kwasa curriculum faculty, the faculty approval. If it's undergraduate, you may have had the Jatan Kwasa Jaza Nasa and Jaza Nasa Jaza Postgraduate. Once those went through, it will go to some place called ASP Center. ASP Center will prep, and then will come to some documents will come to Kimmet, Kimmet will check, everything approved. ASP Center say okay, go to Sene. Sene say go okay, is it okay? Not okay yet. Depends on whether it's major, something major, dual, or whatever. If it's a new program, then definitely they go to KPD. You got what and of course, a new program, you need to do accreditation as well. And you need actually to ensure second hour before that, but we are not going to talk about all those things. Here? So, I'm excluding all, all the other formal papers. Here? So, basically, doing the work will be a four to three months. Everybody still with me? Yes. Simple, right? <laughs> so, basically, four simple steps. I'm just going to show you the big picture. Four simple steps. Okay, here. I put one to two months. Ch uh, it can be faster, it can be slower. Chances are it will be slower. Yes. It will be slower. The fastest one is making amendments if all the lecturers are supporting. Then making amendments can finish in two weeks. But usually we know how lecturers are. Right. So I wish you all the best. Checking one to two months, checking is up back to you. Your checking actually should be quite fast. Because why one to two months? Because sometimes it's going down. You check, you're not happy, you push it back. Okay, setting outcomes. Let me define what outcomes are talking about. Outcomes include program niche, program educational objectives, program learning outcomes. Here, the main ones. Let's talk about something called program niche. I usually don't see programs telling me what the niche is. Example, let's go back to Korean language. Korean language, right? You want to teach people Korean language through new program, Korean language. Ok, 
question, what is your niche? You don't expect the students to, oh, you have English learning Korean language, well done. No. So when I talk about niche, when I talk about Korean language, what do you think of? I think of translators. Will they be good translators? Or they are going to be businessmen trying to, to do business with Koreans. I was translator servicing people, businessmen. Or are they going to be poor guy? You understand what I mean? Oh, why I pass comments like this? Because I read some other programs from from the faculty, they all have things like this. Now the question is this, which one is the niche? No, different niche have different requirements. Here, if you are, if you are just a, a translator, translator, and let's say you intend to work for a company, a company, you don't need much, uh, much, your skills is probably need some presentation skills. Okay? Presentation skills. But let's say you are to do become a tour guide. So you must have in better come up, have the ability to go for a spectrum of communication. You should be able to communicate with small kids. Because no they 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 don't speak people don't bring that small kids communication. You those very, very old people. The choice of words you use, the intonation you use, and so on and so forth is completely different. And no, you need to embed all this into a curriculum. Yeah. Typically, when people talk about communication, is oh, PowerPoint presentation. No, that's completely unacceptable. If you are going for the tour guide approach, if you are going for the what? Translator working for a company, then that's okay. But let's assume that you want to be a translator working freelance. It's different. Translator freelance, you need to have the skills to convince people to hire you to be a translator. So you must know marketing a bit. How to use digital Facebook or whatever. Facebook probably are not the same. Facebook and Dinos on each. And now there are so many new things. Pitar or whatever. Clear? So those are the skills that you need to teach your students. And need to assess them. Are you with me? Yes. Clear? It is not just our presentation and call the company. Clear? So what is your niche? Okay. And after you have know your niche, you formulate a program education objectives and PLOs, program learning outcomes. Okay. The program education objectives is uh, measured five years after they graduate, program learning outcomes, what they should achieve at the time of graduation. Okay, this is to do how to set the outcomes. Okay, this is the top setting outcomes. What you need to do here, first thing first, I assume you found a team already, right? The team decide on the niche. Okay, like typical programs that's being formulated, especially new programs, usually the professor will say, Oh, I know something is good. I believe this to be good, and then they just push the program through. You have seen things like this, and then I know what happened to the program. The program goes to the lake. After so many graduate, nobody got a job. Clear? That's why I use the word effective curriculum. Because we want to make sure a few important things is we want to make sure the students comes up, they can easily find jobs, and it pays well. Of course, some programs are really special. The other day I went to a very special program. Students come to learn because they are interested in it. Clear? There's one program. I look at it, talk to them, it seems like they, they don't, the students don't really get a job with that thing. But students are happy, they are willing to be paid for it. And they are paid a lot for it. Things like culture. Culture things, or maybe anybody from uh, EPI, nobody from EPI. Let's say when it learn, learns more about Islamic thing, you don't expect to get payment, right? Things like this for self satisfaction. There, there, there are programs like this. So when I put down that important thing where a lot of agencies may not apply to these programs. Clear? But of course, if you were to do that thing, you better make sure it's true. Okay? So, team decide on the niche. 
example, let's go back to the Korean language. She thinks the niche is to be uh, what do you call that? Todai, uh, todai. So check value the niche value. In other words, you need to do a survey. Uh, check, check out. How many Korean people are visiting Malaysia? True. Or out, okay, now the question is, you want them to do a guy? You want them to do a guy in Malaysia, you want them to do a guy in Korea. In other words, you want Malaysian to visit Korea and they, they, they are going to be doing that. Yeah. Or, you, you, you get what I mean? So the nature is going to be slightly different. Okay? So, check. Is that, let, let's assume we want them to have Korean visiting Malaysia. How many Koreans visit, visit Malaysia every year? You need to get that data. They come here for business or holiday. When they come here, do they bring in a lot of money and they're willing to spend? Yeah. If they are willing to spend their like people to, uh, to, to, to guide them around, then they will be potential. Or some people, or maybe less assume a lot of foreign companies, but they are those people who like to travel on their own. Okay? They don't really need to tour guide. Then you may have a problem. You got so you need to check where this is value. So it's the word So important to pay well how we can see. But of course, like I said, some 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 programs that is of self-interest that whatever this is value. Really. Value in the sense that there are two things are people are willing to come into your program. Yeah. Don't have a program where nobody wants to come. Okay? Your niche will, 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 will have that. And when the next one is when they come out they can find jobs. Clear? Yeah. But of course the one self satisfaction one, no jobs are coming. But when they come out they are satisfied with it. Some miles are many satisfied things. Clear? So, yeah, clear? Yeah. No, I, I think three things that it may not be true, it may not apply to your, your thinking about it. But you must make sure your niche is valid. If it's not valid, what do you do? You think of a new niche. <laughs> so, circular. I, I write words that you it's taking too much of my time to draw the chart down. Uh, you have an idea? Okay? Next. Once you decide on the niche, let's just say we decide on the tour guide. Do you have the tour guide? Next thing. Get relevant stakeholders. Don't go and get some companies, Korean companies, and say these fellows are good or not. Korean embassy may be okay, but it would be good if you were to be able to find the Malaysia Korea Tourism Association. Maybe the association don't exist. I'm just giving an example. You got that idea? That is going to be a big industry, right? Association, okay, big industry. And then it's relevant stakeholders, right? Currently, a lot of stakeholders that I see are completely irrelevant. You understand? Look at the curriculum review. So, if irrelevant stakeholders give irrelevant comments, you understand? They are sick. See a doctor. Can you see a pharmacist? Can also they can give you medication. But usually the pharmacist look at you too serious. Like some friends of pharmacist say, no, 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 no. If they look at it, they don't look correct. Then they go check out the doctors. Don't come see us. You understand right? They they put sell you medication and think that you look too serious. Because they, they don't it, it, it's professional ethics. So Need to look for random stakeholders, big industry, based on the niche to the industry and advisory panel. So bring them in. Have a check with them. See what they really need. Just now I passed the comment that uh, the, 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 they, they should be able to communicate with small kids to old people, right? It may not be true. It may be just old people because the young people and small kids they are too busy working and studying. 90% of the, or 99% of the tourists from Korea are old people. So you need to go and deal with old people. Their lingos, their culture, the way they like, things like this. So, you are with me? So, you do not know. How do you know? Talk to big industry. Here, I use the word big industry. I hope you all understand why.
So their focus group is actually the IME on the niche and experimental outcomes. So they will be telling you where the niche is. Okay, 90% of those are people coming are old people. Forget about teaching them how to deal with small kids. It's a waste of their time. It would be nice if they know, but not so important. Talk, teaching them how to talk to old people is more important. Usually, let's say, target come here, visit five places, don't make it too rush. A lot of people go on vacations and say, oh, let's go here, 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 I'm going to five different places. Old people don't want to go to five different places. They just want to go to some places for more relaxing, slower pace. I'm just talking here. <laughs> you have to do the tourism. I'm just talking here. You get I me? Mean? So, the, the big industry will tell you. Okay. Of course, you might have to come over here and talk to them and be friends with them. So they will tell you what the niche is, what the expected outcomes is. Okay, clear? From there, yes. But is that a risk, a risk to be so specific? Because, I mean, things change. I mean, it's not that because maybe in this moment, the most of the Korean tourists are old people, maybe in the future they will be not. Okay, agreed. Things may change. The curriculum will change. You, you get three or four years down the line, the curriculum will change. And, and, that, that's one aspect. Another aspect is, another aspect is, you have to fulfill the requirements. The requirement says that, yes, if they are all old people, you will spend 90% of the time teaching them how to deal with old people, 10% of the time teaching them how to deal with them, to make it a complete because you cannot fully listen to what the big industry says. Your program outcomes is being governed by NQA. You like it or not, you need uh, what you call that, communication, teamwork, and uh, the whole set of skills, digital skills, so on and so forth. You understand me? So, yes, we have to be careful not to indulge in a certain aspect, but if that is the we should go to the same. No, another thing I take note is this. I put the word big industry here is cost. Big industry, mother come out, will have four sides. If you talk to look at oh sorry, it's not just big industry. The big boss of big industry. It's a big boss of big industry. Because if you are talk to the lower management, they only see what is happening now. The big boss of big industry so called see things five years down the line, ten years down the line. Clear? So all these things you need a balance and they really check this. But what you see is hundred percent right, you don't put all your eggs in one basket. Okay? Clear? There are certain other requirements in this. So once you done uh, discuss with them, you prepare draft of outcomes. Okay? You prepare a draft. And then prepare and send survey form to the No. You have to be careful. People like what our, our friend can do again. Sorry, my name is Andrea. 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 Yes, Andrea. Okay, after Andrea? No, I'm not. Okay, uh, what, like what our friend Andrea is now in this question. Occasionally, this big industry may have certain bias. You know what I mean? That is why never trust anybody. Okay, an idea? This 
่งเป็นแบบเป็นเช่นกับ PEO PLO อะไรของเป็นสิ่งเดียวกัน PEO สปอร์ตสเตทไลฟ์สแตทสตรัคเจอร์เรียร์โปรเฟชชั่นอลและคอมพิวชั่นเวทแต่โปรเฟสชั่นแฟร์งเรดิวส์แต่ชิคอัพเตอร์เดอะเรดิวเตอร์ซูดิสติ้งบีมาเชนทรีต์ต่อไปในสัปดาห์เดอะเรดิวเตอร์แต่ในวันโปรแกรมเดอะมีอัลคัมส์เรดิวส์ไอ้สเปกเตอร์แต่ไว้ในอัลคัมส์วันคอมพิวชั่นของทุกคอร์สในโปรแกรมและในวันคอมพิวชั่นของทุกคอร์สโอ้ performance indicators, PLO performance indicators, clear, no, here comes the important thing. The PLOs, PLOs are very boring. In little ways, we 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 are coming to some stuff that's very boring. It's it's very hard to fully describe the things. That is why they are performance indicators. The performance indicators of PLOs will help you. Measure PO better. The performance indicators of PLO will help you define PLO better. Clear? Next. Hey, the big picture. That's the big picture. So the university mission and mission program aim, program and mission objective supports it. Must be defined, measurable, flexible, three to five years. It needs to be benchmark. It needs to be benchmark with other people. It's not just talking to the industry, no. We need a benchmark with inverted comma similar programs. Check how other Korean linguistic programs have their PEOs. But be careful. The definition of PEOs, I, I did a benchmark of, uh, around the world. A lot of people mess up the definition of PEOs. Top universities, they, the way they put, they put in the PO, it looks like a PO. Don't come and ask them, oh, this one's a top universities, put this on. No, 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 no. It goes against the definition. A lot of people press that up, even top universities. So yeah, the industry advisory panel, the 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 CC, the PLOs, the comments on PLOs, and the PLOs. It's not just industry advisory panel. It's time of that to know that it depends on MQA, the MQA requirement. There's a professional body or whatever other requirements all down the line. It also depends on the ministry requirement. Happy they pass some words called Excel. Not Excel. Yes, no Excel. Excel. Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah. Then one fine day, the type of sulam, sulam, yes. Keeps. Uh, every every one to two years, we can come something. Serious. So go here. So there's a lot of little little initiative coming out, coming out, coming out. So summer, Sunday, you may meet back, meet meet with them. Characteristics of a PO. What is a PO? Okay. So first thing first, broad goals for each program that should be consistent with the mission of the institution. Whatever, whatever, whatever the industry says, somehow, some way, need to be consistent with the mission of the institution. Our mission and vision just change, right? Just change. So just change your mind. So the minute you change, you know what should happen. All your PEOs are no longer relevant unless it brings back to this new new mission and mission. So when people say, "Oh, we can change our mission, mission," I usually look at your or you guys are short term. Understand? Because it needs to be consistent with mission and mission. The PEOs will support the mission and mission. If the mission and mission change, then are you supporting it? Consistent with the needs of key constituencies and address the concerns of. This is outcome based education. Okay, so match with the mission, match with the needs of our constituencies. Okay, clear. Just now the earlier ones we talked about with the industry. Next, comprehensive, providing a vision for the whole program. So by looking at the three POs, immediately we know what the program is all about. Clear. When the, look, go back and look at your POs. Does it does does it really tell you what? I've seen one one PO, some, a set of PO from a top universities in the US. They say we want to provide, we want to turn all our students into captains of industry, of the industry. And that's going to be CEOs of big companies. They can set up their companies and they become CEOs. And then if they don't go that line, they're going to be top renowned professors. Yeah. 
value here. Okay? So clearly define niche. No, PEO is only a few words through one sentence. How can you have a clearly defined niche? And like the one that Brad just now mentioned, time changes, niche changes. So what you need to do is you need to have performance indicators. Because if you don't have performance indicators, every few years you know what you do, you change your POs. And changing POs involve printing up posters, printing up books, and everything will get messed up. Okay? And then we'll say, I do the same program. So, POs is best to be supported with appropriate performance indicators. Measurable and it was qualitative and quantitative assessment. Most of the time, when you, when you put the POs as general statements, it's going to be difficult to measure. That's why you get performance indicators. Flexible, again, if we, performance indicators can be very flexible and change with time, okay? Should be adaptable to future changes in the needs of constituencies and ambition of the institution. Publish. So your PEOs need to be published. Go back and check whether, go back and check whether you can find your PEOs. Most of you are lecturers, right? Okay. Can you go back and see whether you can check your program's PEOs? Where you can find it? Can you find your website? Sure. Can you find any posters? Is there any posters around? Website, do you need to search very deep? It's very difficult to find your POs or is prominently displayed? Our vision and mission of our university. Can you easily find it anywhere? No. The POs, our vision and mission of the university to a university is, is equal to how a PO to a program. If you go and find it, that's not really a use. Why do you need to publish it so that everybody knows about it and move towards achieving it? Here, if not, nobody knows about it and nobody will do anything about it. Okay, I talked about performance indicators just now, right? Bottom right. So now, how to populate it? Ask all the academic staff in the department now, ask the industry right now for each of the PEOs or PLOs. How, how, how can they write? So how, how to write? It can be based on searching the website or through their personal experience. Okay? Based on personal experience, I think this PO should be this, uh, should be defined in this way or that way. Right? Two, list all the indicators that have been proposed. If there are similar indicators, remove the indicates. Ask all the academic staff or the industry or alumni, etc., to vote which indicator they think is the best. Here, once vote, you rank the indicators by the highest vote to the lowest vote. Pick the top three recommended to be two to four to be used as performance indicators. Here, simple. Okay, I know how to do it. I hope this helps you all. You really have to see performance indicators. Okay, assessment of PO surveys. So how do you assess POs? You have, you have heard about assessment POs, right? Yes. Yes. No. No. Nobody do it. No worries. You better do it by next curriculum review. How to prepare surveys? Be clear about the goals of the data collection process. Align the questions to meet the goals. You need to be very clear what you want to measure. What you want to measure? How you want to measure? Don't ask irrelevant questions. No. All of you frequently get survey questions, right? Say yes, yes. Do you answer those survey questions? Say no, say no. <laughs> okay, I, I use something called the five minute rule. Five minute rule. If a survey question was sent to you, and it's only one page, and it's easy to answer, will you answer? Clear? Clear? Have you answered survey questions that is, let's say, 10 pages long? You answer after three pages, you just throw it away. Frequent, yeah, yeah, you understand what I mean by the five minute rule? So make sure you follow the five minute rule. A typical person can answer your survey question within five minutes. Else prepare for your survey questions to be completely thrown out. 
unless the person really owe you a big favor, else forget about it. To be honest, yes. uh, to be honest, I normally don't answer any survey. When I see survey, I just put it to the trash. And uh, this is what actually happened because now we have already sent the, the survey that was very short uh, to the industry, and we sent it to 130 companies, and just four of them after three months answered. Because the moment they see, I, I, because I, I talk directly because I, I, I know these people, I know the CEO, and when I told them, ah, really, it was yours? Ah, no, I just, uh, I didn't even open the video. When I, when I saw survey, I, I think it's a waste of time, so I just, okay, don't do it. Yes, like, 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 like the way you pointed out. Like I send that to them, I know the CEOs. You know them, it's important. You know them, you tell them, I will send this away now, can you please answer? Five minutes of time, they will answer. Else, they will throw it away. Clear, leverage on your friends. Else, you send blanks away, it's going to end up over there. The world there, there, there are different spectrums of it. One, certain people are just throwing immediately, there's a lot of people doing it. Some people are just answering. Occasionally, if the survey looks interesting, you open it, sharp ones, five minute group, works. Ten pages, wish you all the best. <laughs> you, you, you get what I mean? So, chances of survival becomes high. If it's a friend, then they will entertain. Even if the uh, first ten pages, they may not have friend you. Okay? So, balance it a bit. Okay, I'm sure that the respondents understand the meaning of the questions. Do pilot tests. Please do pilots. A lot of people don't do pilot tests. When you look at the survey questions, it doesn't make sense. It may make sense when you do it at night, but if you look it and do it again, or somebody look into it, it may not make sense. But, so please do a pilot test. Ask questions that the responders can and will answer. Okay, so this is an example of PO's. So we put our PO's, the performance indicators, the requirement, the performance target. Okay, characteristics of PLOs is basically <coughs> almost 100% same like a PO, except these two detectional things. The PLO needs to be consistent with the PO's. One, two, it needs to be consistent with the needs of a professional body or MQF clusters. Clear? Two things. Two things. The extra things. The rest is similar. So, PLO measurement, the most popular way to measure PLO is through exam. True. No. For some PLOs that have none knowledge base, you usually need to use rubrics. I'm putting here two types of different rubrics, holistic and analytic. Most of the time, most of the time, you love to use holistic rubrics. Okay? Easy to use, easy to mark. But <coughs> if you want to make improvement, you need to see radio strengths and weaknesses for improvements, you need to use that. Let me bring it up. Here? No. <coughs> I'm not recommending you all break down your rubrics for all the, all the assessment. It's just too time consuming. Identify a few assessment where you want to say, I want to really measure and I want to make improvement to it here. Then you bring data and analytics. Else, use home state. Are you with me? It's not that analytics is better, analytics is time consuming, your time is important, your time is very important. So, balance. Okay, generic or cost specific rubrics. The current practice is all lecturers prepare their own rubric for their own cost. I'm not saying anything. Everybody will do their own rubric for their own cost. Problem, it may not match the performance in the most of the time when I look at rubrics, it doesn't match the PLOs at all. A lot of people make mistakes. True? That's why top management, top management, the two coordinators, uh, one, one, one person will be a top coordinator. So, recommendation. Design generic rubrics to be used by all the courses. So, you design generic rubrics. Okay? Of course, it, it may be too difficult for our program to do a load. You can get a team to help you do it. So they may be special cases. Some people say, I don't want to, to use this generic rubric at all. They may be special cases. Up to you all. The levels in the rubric may be adapted to the year of study to better reflect the higher expectations and the base. Here. So, 
this manner, people will go too wrong. You'll be around that. Clear? Rubrics, fire testing and user training. Don't just happily divide your rubrics. Have, ever, have someone passed your rubrics before I look at it? How do I make? Oh. You all get rubrics before, say yes. Rubrics, you all end up with rubrics before people pass your rubrics. Okay, go so evaluate the students. This is the rubrics, look at it, look at the students, how to grade. True? Yes. Because you think that user training. Understand? So, first thing first, before user training, you need to find the testing. Increased inter waiver reliability and validity. Reliability, you the, the same measurement characteristics. Validity, measure wise, better than the measurement. When you properly design a rubric, validity shouldn't be much of a problem. Here, you can see down there, discuss the problem. Reliability is an issue if they don't have the user training. Everybody interpret a word differently. This is a well-written report. What do you mean by well-written report? Okay, uh, the, the literature review is done in a proper manner. Clear literature review, am I very clear, right? But what is your expectations for an uh, undergraduate, a master's, and a PhD? Different, right? I'm making assumptions, you are all lecturers, right? You all got undergrad students? Yes? No? No final project? No? So the expectations are, how should I put it? Different. Am I saying right thing? Different. How do you put it different? For different levels. Next. Some people expectation for undergraduate is as high as another person's expectation for PhD. Have you ever seen those people before? So you need to have the user training. Okay, so first thing first, by the last thing, get a potential user to use it based on the feedback, improve the rubrics because sometimes the language you use is going too long, it may shorten it, make it clearer. Then the user training, bring all the potential users of the rubrics, bring them first, then pass them to the assignments to be graded. Everyone should give much similar to the standard marks. If the user had done it. Clear? No, I don't think anybody has done user training before. Have heard of people doing user training? Alright. That's why our reliability and validity of our reliability of our rubrics are close to non-existence. You understand what I mean? People need to say, please don't give me the lecture of that. <laughs> True? Heard of other stories? Because we don't have user training. But user training will take a lot of time. Not right? easy. Huh? You need to get a group of people and then pass them, okay, this is a report, mark it, mark it, then ask them, why do you give that marks? Then you check how they define the rubrics. Why do you give that marks? Two persons, same, same, same report, one person they give three points, another person give that box. That happens right. So, so check. Okay, computation of PLO. So, your PLO needs to be measured, program the near outcomes. So, I put down there four approaches to measure PLO. CLO approach, assessment approach, exit exam approach, survey approach. Most of the time, most of the time, you are using the short short. Yes, correct. You are using the CLO approach. Assessment approach, I think they actually use it. I don't know, many don't use it. Medic use spider exam approach. Come to the you can do it right, the medic do something, do it, perform it. There's a patient here, treat the patient, show me how to treat the patient. That's a spider exam approach. You really show your skills and exit exam approach. Exit exam. Let's finish the whole program, give them exit exam. Survey approach, I think some of you may have done it. Okay, let, let's go through the details of it. So, CRO approach, there are actually three models, actually more than three models. So, the first one is by specific CROs at specific courses. Clear? Not all the CROs. By all the CROs for all the courses, that's what you are usually doing. True? 
by all the CROs from specific accumulating classes. Flexibility by age is your program to choose which are better than suits the other ones. Why we use the first one? No. Because so many exams, right? Exams, first year exams, second year exams, third year exams. Does first year exams really indicate the ability of the students? Does, I mean, first year exam, does a final year exam that they reach the final year, third year, fourth year exam indicate their actual ability? Why should you use the first year? So the first year is inverted karma irrelevant, true? The importance of it is low. Final year, the importance is higher. I want to measure, let's say, communication skills. Okay. And my communication skills, I have, let's say, uh, a side, uh, discussion, um, presentation, presentation, and things like this. Usually, presentation is being presented to a single lecturer. Is that good? Unless you present the handle of lecturers when the industry will also come, which one is better? That's what I'm saying. So that will be an assessment approach really. So we go for that individual assessment of that certain CRO and I mean or, or that certain CRO and you mentioned for later years. Cumulating courses are basically important courses in later years. Competition and PRO assessment approach. Did there be a few assessment to be used to measure the PRO? Preferably final year subjects, critical accumulating subjects, certain very, very important subjects, more than one type of assessment. So you should use more than one type of assessment. So you shouldn't just presentation. Maybe while they're working in a group, let's say design project group, you measure, they use interrater, you sit down there, look at the students talking to the teammate, how they talk, how they interact, stuff like this. That would be another type of assessment, so two different assessments. Here, okay, exit exam is done after the students have completed the whole program. If you need your whole program, then you can exam. A set of questions can be written, verbal or practical, a set of the students have acquired required knowledge, skills based on the outcomes. I think the only one to do exit exam is magic, dental, 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 Nobody else to accident that. This one takes too much of our time and energy. Because we think that, okay, you have learned all these concepts, right? Fine, you sit here. Then why don't we go Okay, answer these exam questions. <laughs> Let's demonstrate your ability, do something. Talk to another person, do a presentation. So, it's too much of our time and energy. Yes, that's it. So, this may be a bit painful, but maybe somehow, someday, they have to. Okay, survey approach. This approach is an indirect approach based on student perception of their own achievement of each of their own. Own achievement, their, their, their own perception here, how they perceive themselves. This approach should only be used as a supplement to the earlier direct methods for triangulation purposes. Here, there's a university that should not be named in this. Very interesting. They did a CRO approach measurement and showed that the students achieved 80 or marks. You all know CRO approach, right? They did a survey approach and the student's achievement is 80 over percent. Good or good. Then they also have something called exit exam. Guess how much the student got from exit exam? Yes? Don't lie. Give me a number. Let's give me a number to be shy. What? So how, how, how much do you think they get? Oh, you are accurate when you in that group at the time. Uh. Yes, the students got one. Basically, this clearly indicates the program is a complete failure. Beyond any reasonable doubt. The students look as if they achieve a CRO. Look as if they achieve. They think they achieve a CRO, but basically they are completely incompetent. That's it, exact is of the highest standards. And are you with me? Highest standards, basically all the students get. And they then present it and say, oh, you are very good, you are three different methods measure. I look at it, oh, they do not, they are embarrassing themselves, they don't even realize that. Do you understand what I'm saying, right? Exit exam is your actual.
说 Tesla 就很牛逼，开车很牛逼的，很很牛逼。Okay, okay. So this one is a way of approach. We conduct event of verbal can be conducted through cost level of program level up to your. Okay. So this is just can summarize this with you. You are stick to the CRO approach. Go ahead, but usually it's not. But everybody is discussing. Up to you. Okay. Examples of PRO performance. This comes from vendor program standards. They are very clearly defined. You see, all of them are CRO, PRO one run, and the PRO one is going to be either complicated, like very long, right? About about, about two, two lines, two lines, three lines through. Okay, look at your PRO. Your PRO domain one knowledge, synthesized knowledge in the field of angle dynamics. So simple, right? Simple, right? No big deal, right? True. Not simple, but not not simple because in the middle we have some heard something like endodontics. What's the meaning of it? I'm not so sure. So in the next class, yeah. So let's look at it. How they define it? Okay. So knowledge. What's knowledge? You need to integrate relevant knowledge in biology, anatomy, physiology, of normal and abnormal, intra and extra oral structures and issues in pain management, including prevention and control. Clear? One. No, that's not enough. Two. Weight the primary and supplementary techniques for local anesthesia of the part, and so on and so forth. Can you see the performance indicators? When you look at performance indicators, is it very clear what is required to do for the PROs? But of course, this is formulated by a team of experts around Malaysia. That's why they do so much. For your case, it's going to be rather painful to cut out so much. So. Follow my approach of the performance indicators. Ask the whole our lecturers formulate two or so on, rank them, board, 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 and end up with three or four. Clear? They are very well defined. Look at leadership communication and teamwork. They don't just say PowerPoint presentation. Feel a rapid work effectively as part of a team and manage members appropriately. Okay? And that matters of administration or negotiation in order to achieve an appropriate outcome. And what do we mean? Here, this is how they define it. It's a bit, uh, a bit too much for most people. But the idea is the same. Look at this. Huh? I think quite a number of your PLO may look something like this. Display leadership qualities through communicating and working effectively with peers and stakeholders. True? I think quite a number of appeals something similar to that one. Okay, see how they define it. So, define it. Okay, look at this one. Okay, this one is a little bit. Now, we'll talk about setting guidelines. Okay. Over here, we are going to talk about guidelines. Each and every one of the guidelines is actually should be at least one lecture, one hour plus. What happens is over here, one fine day somebody asks me to present and I'm not really sure. So each and every one of these guidelines, I turn it into a single page. So reading the guidelines itself may not help you much. So try to listen and get some ideas. So I will try to briefly go through it, briefly go through it. Actually doing it will each of the guidelines pick you at least a week to two weeks. Okay, <coughs> first thing first, there are numerous guidelines, so I put down a seven type of guidelines. There may be more guidelines you want to develop, up to you, up to you, but these seven guidelines is what I have done 20 years ago. So nothing new, nothing special. But don't worry, I've never seen anybody like this before. That's 20 years ago. Prepare a curriculum map. Let's let's move in the way. This is the way. Curriculum map. Have you done this before? Okay, let's put it this way. This came up. Anybody got program that's one year, one year can finish. One year can finish. One year can finish. Okay. If it's a one year program, curriculum map may not be of much use. Here, here, here we mean uh, If it's at least a 
three years program that curriculum map is very relevant. What is this? What do you see? This is a four years program. Yeah? Semester one, semester two, semester one, semester two, so on so forth. This so-called orange color is a type of courses. This is my program. I think this version is version 15 years ago. I copied 15 years ago. Some of them they are copied, 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 or I copied. So, my, I come from a program called Biomedical Engineering. What is Biomedical Engineering? The founder of this program passed the best in first year. Biomedical Engineering is application of mechanical and electrical engineering onto medical problems. So we are made up of three aspects. Here, three aspects. So this is our mechanical subjects. Here, I think this is our electrical subjects. This is our biology type subjects. Here. The green ones are our, are our biomedical subjects. Here, so we are merging them together. Are you with me? Merging them together. And this is our practical based subjects. So the color codes will tell you what type of subjects they are and how they are related. When come the green ones, you can see the, the, the orange one and the blue one will come in and join up together. We will tie up with the red color, which is the biology aspects mixture. Okay? Here, why do you need to formulate this one? Example. If a student did not take this course and insists on taking this course, please advise them to do it. You need this course knowledge to do this one. But if, of course, if they insist on doing it, don't say that you want it. Here? And let's assume, assume that the student suddenly missed this course. Okay? You can test this of nobody, you can take it here. You can take it here. It's still okay. Before taking this course. Can you take this course before taking this course? Can okay, no problem. No relation. You can. Maybe there is some they are related because they are mechanical based, but you don't really fully use that knowledge. They are a family but distance cousin. Clear? If you are so this will help a few people. It will help the lecturer to know what to teach, who needs their knowledge. It will help the students to know that. If students were to go for something called I mean, five, ten years ago, you heard something of this called mobility. I heard that there are mobility, students going in, going out, especially going out, they suddenly miss one whole semester. You can, in better karma, recommend them when to take, take the subjects. Get what I mean? Which is the critical subject you need to take to ensure that you're ready on time, which subject can push to the Clear? This is the importance of this curriculum. No. Another approach to curriculum map is actually more brutal, which is to use prerequisite courses. True? So, if let's say I put that this is prerequisite to that, then they must take this before they can do true. Do you know what's the problem with prerequisite courses? If you put a lot of prerequisite courses there, the students will never graduate. For those who fail, that's that thing. Somehow, somehow, you are, you are seeing, I mean, some of you have seen this fact for the students who graduate. So, this will guide the students to know that they should know this, but without the constraint of a pre course. Here. Can you formulate this? No. The first time I formulated this in 2012, I formulated it wrongly. You know what I mean by formula wrong? When you were to do uh, this chart, you draw it this way. You ask a colleague to draw them, they draw it differently. Agree? I draw wrongly. And I show it to my professor. No, 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 no. You know what? How I draw? I draw this one. 
try to this, try to this, try to this. But professor says, no, this one has nothing to do with this. But look at him, when I look at him, I think of it, yeah, true. What's he saying, true? You know what I mean? Senior people, very senior people, will be able to draw this near very well. Junior people at the time of no, junior people not so capable of drawing. So please don't send the junior people to draw. They, they can't draw. They, they, they can't draw. They don't know how the relationship, they're not so clear about the relationship. Everybody clear? Drawing this? Can you see the benefits of this? Have the students know, okay, this subject can drop, this subject is critical, please take this subject. You can drop all the subject, but this subject must take. You don't take this subject, you will have a problem later. Clear? Or, the students want to take this subject. Let's say you insist on taking this subject. You ask them one brand. Have you taken this subject? Yes. You fail? Okay, never mind. You need the knowledge from here. Or warning. They can take. They have learned a bit. They can take. You, you, you get, let's get the idea. Okay, clear? So, draw this map. Not so straightforward to draw. If you are not experienced enough, you can't draw. But this is very important. This is one most important thing in curriculum. Because imagine without drawing this, you push this one above this one. It happens before, right? You have seen things like this before. It's very tricky here, or four years before. So then you say, oh, this class uh, cannot be much of this curiosity cost. Uh, then you can must push that department cost in the later years to so have to push one later and then realize, oops, how come students didn't learn that? Then you can push right. Oops, yes, no. Here, yeah. drawing this will ensure that strange things happening in your job. So then there's somebody instructing, I want you to move away a three credit hours cost here to somewhere later. You know which one can push and where you push to. Are you with me? Can you see this one can save you a lot of trouble? But building this, they need, they need some time and time. Not so straightforward. Clear, 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 clear. Get the idea. Because you have too many linguistics. Ah, I remember that. There are a lot of cool things, but I forgot the terminology. You see, you have three different tracks and stuff like that. Linguist, the way of mind. So, okay, clear? Can you see all these are mixed together and all these are bio, biomass? Yeah. So from here, what can you do? You can actually have an extra column to calculate the total training hours. If let's say not happy, you can push that, you don't push, you don't push, you can push, this one can push. Push, 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 here. True? Let's push this one all the way up here, it's okay. Because nobody is using this one's knowledge until here. It's very much later. Until here. Okay? So, you get the idea of what you can push and what you cannot push. It helps the coordinators, it helps the lecturers, the lecturers know what's happening, who, who are their friends, what's going to happen, and things like this. Okay, everybody? Clear? Any questions? Yes. Um, two questions. The first one is, what is, this, what is the software used to uh, develop this app? The second one is, uh, what would be the purple color boxes? Okay, the purple color boxes are our practical courses. So some of some are practical courses. You learn all these things, does it have the practical courses? To develop this map, uh, I think this was drawn, those was drawn using Visio. It is, it's, okay, no, Visio is not so easy to use, right? So it's not that, oh, I'm not put here, put there, no, 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 you need to draw and then you have to not that difficult to use, not so easy to use as well. Okay, clear? But somehow, some way, if you're not senior enough, you cannot draw this. Unless you fully understand. By drawing this, you immediately you fully understand how the program works. Okay? Curriculum map is extremely important. <coughs> extremely important. Okay, this is courses to peer in Canada. So you need to create a guideline. So there are two approaches to it. Approach one, I'm assuming that there are bosses are your coordinator, you're the curriculum 
approach one. You clearly define and tell the person. Okay, you think this cost right? This cost, the name of the cost, the name. French language. Oh, French language, fine. French language, I expect you to fulfill PRO1 and PRO5. Go do whatever you feel like doing. Clear? This is top down instruction. One approach. Another approach is you give some guidelines and they do it. This is a guideline. But of course, we create that high point. You to make it look as if it's bad. Life is never bad. Rule number one. True. Life is never bad. But you may create a guideline to make it look as if it's bad. So this is the guideline. So each PRO, you need to fulfill at least four times. Clear? I'm, I'm just making it up to your how you want to. It depends on the number of courses. If the courses not that many. Four, four, four courses in too many. True. So up to your conditions for cost in your method may have special needs. They can be special needs, huh? That's special needs. So most people love to go PR1, PR2. True. I'm not saying what I mean. They like the ones. You don't like the ones. So everybody choose one from here, choose one or two from here up to you as far as you have to. So each PRO should be assessed once every year. Another rule. So it creates some rules. So let's assume something that is happening. Let's assume that we have a four years program that's a program four years program. And nobody wants to measure PRO seven. Let's assume so. So if that people are okay, you look at it, you start, you do it, you do it, you do it, you do it. Yeah, somehow, something force them to do it. Else, you're going to have a problem. One, two. Let's say PRO6, everybody who wants to do it is in final year. Yeah? So you need to shift it. Check first year, you can do uh, final year, they can reduce and things like this. Yeah? And there's another thing. You need to look at the profile of this thing. Another thing to look at the profile. Oh, okay. This one is even longer. Okay, guidelines, okay, this, is, this is a sample. Guidelines to cost PO or PI performance indicator method. Special cases must be noted down with strong test definitions. I can let you have special cases because please be note it down with strong test definition. Okay, the next step, the next step, the next step. The core knowledge and application, PO1 and PO2. All the core knowledge courses must have PO1. Okay, we you know what the core knowledge courses. Uh, the core knowledge you must have PO1. The culminating courses like capital fire projection have multiple performance indicators from PO1. All the core knowledge courses should have PO2. Should have doesn't mean you must have. Program outcome distribution. First year, the number of PO map the cost should be 3. Later years, maximum of 4 POs. Special classes and so on and so forth. Clear? You go create your rules. And let's go back. Here, there's something called profile. Okay, there's a profile. Can you see the profile? Here, profile. There are some questions you need to ask. Typically, typically, courses for programs, PO1, PO2 should be high. True? That's the knowledge or knowledge. They're the highest. Next, teamwork, communication, teamwork, communication, leadership, all those things, the soft skills are dealing with work, should be moderately high. Moderately high. Yeah, so I, let, let, let me just give you some numbers. PO1, PO2, I'm just giving numbers, uh, relative things. Uh. The, the technical ones should be, let's say, about 20. Uh, teamwork, uh, communication, leadership should be around 8. While those ethics or those things should be around at least 4, 4, 5. Clear, clear, you can see things like that. However, what do you call that? Back to Korean. Korean uh, communication uh, must be very hard. 15 or so. Clear? 
there are some programs, some programs, uh, the digital content should be high. Yeah, you understand what I'm saying? Let's say some programs, let's say ethics, or let's say bioethics, or things like this, program called bioethics. Then your ethics component should be high. Relatively higher value. When I say high, it's, it's not all five, it should be a ratio of at least 10. Should have 10, 15, like this. Are you all with me? It doesn't mean that profile must be like this, huh? All programs should have their own special profile, your special needs. Okay? Yeah? Okay, this is what a lot of people mess up. So, let's start with taxonomy type and level. For PLO1, we have performance indicators. If we go for performance indicator approach, I just now remember the technical performance indicator. Relate relevant biology, that's cognitive. Family and differential diagnosis, cognitive, so on and so forth. Leadership, build rapid to work effectively, effective. And then methods of administration, psychomotor. So you need to tie up the PRO performance indicators to the taxonomy. Yeah? Because if we don't tie this up, I've seen people like this. That in your farm two, there's one farm where you put your PRO one, PRO one, you put down there, some people put down there, effective. It's knowledge, it's not effective, it's cognitive when they put the right effective. A lot of strange things happen. With this guideline, if you do this properly, you pass the lecturer, that's it. What are you doing? PL1 and PL5, right? PL1. PL1 is cognitive. Here, it must be cognitive when they put the taxonomy. Here, PL5, okay. It can be effective, it can be psychomotor. Which one are you taking? Here, which performance you give are you taking? Remember here? This is very common mistakes that I see in the curriculum you know. A lot of people mess this up. Okay, modes of learning type, models of learning taxonomy. Types. Just now it's types, right? It's cognitive, psychomotor, or affective. Now we're gonna talk about something called the lab. This is inverted comma a model for undergraduate program. Three years. Clear? Masters, PhD, or whatever, the model may look slightly different. Just masters is one year. So, we can have the low, medium, high. Model one. What's model one? That's what I explain with that. Low, medium, high. So, if you are a first year teacher, first year class, your taxonomy must be a type low, type low, clear? And if you are calling more than one. So what is type low? In e e e no, upper one can define, this one you can define also. Over here, low is defined as C1 or C2, P1 or P2, A1 or A2. Back to our friend just now, teaching French. You are teaching a which year subject? First year. First year. Uh, you got PO1, right? Your PO1 can either be C1 or C2. Here, you got your path right. You like effective or psychomotor? Which one? Effective, right? You can guide the D1 or D2. Here, no. This is just a guideline. Let's see, is it low is only A1. A2 is here, A3 is here. Up to your. You all with me? It doesn't mean, oh my, A1, A2 is low. No. It's up to your. It depends on programs. The hard science one, the effective is going to be lower. The practical science one, the cycle model should not should, should be quite high as well. True? The arts people, the effective should be higher. You, you, you get what I mean? So this table is just an example. It could be A1, A2, A3. Never reach A4 and A5. Okay? Okay, so that's low, medium, high. This is fixed. Okay? Next. Order two. If you have first year, you have more of low, some of medium, less of high. So let's say you got PO1. So PO1, do you want the C3? Yes. Okay, well, 
some some moderate. Okay, uh. the next one uh, active environment. Okay, uh. then overall for all the subjects you look at it, you can see more low, some more, some uh, medium, less high. One or two high, I would say. Here, are you with me? Get the idea. And then when it comes to medium, some low, more medium, some high, and so on and so on. No. Most of you, the way you design a curriculum looks something like order two. Something like order two. But I call it a project order. Completely does not make sense. Your first year I can see C6, your final year I can see C1. Clear, clear, clear. Do you agree? Go back and check the program. Then you see all the all the project come up. Not plan. You didn't plan this right. Your lecturer, lecturer, go, actually, poor like because you also also don't know. Somebody just passed it. Up. You know, I will feel like you're gonna right, right, right. So you feel like what? So you get all the students coming up. Clear? Can you see? Some people want some courses. You even if first year you need a high, true, clear. Are you with me? So that's why modern is slightly more messy. And those are important courses you must have high. Then then it, 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 just just let them have high there. Okay, clear? And also it's very strange to go uh, first year low, second year medium, third year high. Because uh, when they come third year they will be shocked. So first year they get a bit of exposure of what's high, and second year more exposure and so on so forth. Yeah, with me. Okay, so actually, I, I, I kind of like model two. Model one is very simple. No question asked. What year are you? What year are you? Let's let let's take an example year two. I don't care what year it is. It must be C three, C four, P three, P four, A three, A four. Very easy for uh, for people to check through. But that model is problematic. Here, because it constrains people too much.
minutes, maybe everybody go for a tea break. 15 minutes tea break.
lecture, have you heard about flip lectures? Flip classrooms? Flip classrooms can be a of lectures. It seems like lecture is different than lecture. Than lecture. If it's a flip classroom, it could be tied to something like lifelong learning. Lectures may not be lifelong learning. You can have a flip because they learn on their own. And during lecture, it could be active learning, cooperative learning. Now, there's a lot of ways a lecture can be. So preferably, you define what is a lecture. Preferably. So that everybody knows what's a lecture. Tutorial, what's a tutorial? Tutorial can be, and we are, let, me, let me show you how tutorial is defined. Tutorial is defined as having a class size not more than 25 students. True? How about that? Class size not more than 25 students is the tutorial. Class size more than 25 students is not called tutorial. Clear? One. Two. Tutorial can be, I give you questions, go back to, come back, and submit to me. And then we call tutorial. People call that tutorial. Some people do that, like tutorial questions, go back to ask them. Some people call that. Tutorial can be come to class, let me show you some work and some talk. Tutorial. True? Tutorial can be nah, questions. Tomorrow during the dark class, you show me the answer. Can you see all these are different? And they will be teaching you different things with different program outcomes. You have map different program outcomes. So we find it here. So that's why I put the word in You prepare this table, you define it properly, then you say, ah, this one looks like what I'm doing. I choose this type. This looks like what I'm doing. I choose this type. Here. This will guide people. So the people will not. I mean the lecturers are not simply marked and end up in the wrong place. Any questions? <coughs> See before? Well, See before. Who do you do? See who number one. So people don't want to know what you mean. You are. You, you do for yourself or do for everyone? Ah, this is for everyone, you know. Program for you, do this and pass to everybody. Uh, so more and more because you see, uh, the French, uh, French, uh, Korean, uh, French and Korean come from linguistic faculty. They can have completely different definition. It's okay. Clear, clear. Oh, okay, since we are all linguistic, just do one for the faculty, everybody follow. Can also. But or since the one university, uh, Dr. Uh, can you share my uh, Because we are different faculty, the our teachers will be different. Clear. Oh, so, it depends on our, 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 what? I'm a niche. I want to produce tour guide. You want to produce businessman. Our objective is different. So our oh. branding may be different. Clear? I get the idea. Oh, doing this, not easy. You need time. You need to read a lot. Serious. You read a lot and a lot and a lot. Is that, is that all me? There should be more. This, this list is my shop. There should be more. Most of the time, 
when I look at the cost of gram, I see A, B, C, I don't see D. You're going to go back and check the cost of gram, you see do that. Very easy question. And, but at the end of this course, my students will be able to do literature review. You guys have seen some cost of like this. Can you put that able to do critical uh, literature review, put it as PhD? Possible? Can you put it as master? Can you put it as undergrad? Uh, if you can put it everywhere, uh, then you're game. You know why? You don't have to be there. Clear? Everything clear? So, what is the condition? The condition is at the end of this course. We assume that you finish this course. Clear? What is the audience? We will be able to describe basic concepts of work, energy, and efficiency. That is the behavior. Most of the time, you get this one at the end of the class, correct? You get the student, correct? You get described basic concepts of work, energy, and efficiency. You got that correct? How to do literature review? In three types of thermodynamic cycle, you usually don't have that. Most of you miss the degree part. Are you with me? The minute you miss the degree part, I can take your course of I can give it, push it to master, and then graduate. I can push it back to standard five. Yeah. Or six. Or four five. Clear? Are you with me? Understand the idea? Understand the idea? That's why the degree is very important. Clear? That is the A, B, C, D approach. I don't quite like this approach. Up to you. Okay, No, I don't call it, they call it. Like, That's why they call it. <laughs> because otherwise it's not AD. Uh, okay. ABCD <laughs> 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 sounds nice. It doesn't make no sense to be AD. Yeah, yeah, I'm actually angry. Why? Okay, next. Model 2. I'm mm -hmm. of Model 2. This is what I learned 20 years ago. And I like this more. Constructed by three elements. This is not four elements. This is not three elements in here. Work identifies the performance to be demonstrated. I believe most of you are trained this way, right? When you are formulating, you go for work approach. Huh? Okay, so everybody support Model 2. <laughs> learning outcome statement specifies what learning will take place. Okay. Run Statement reflecting the criteria of standard or acceptable performance. So I'm taking back the same phrase again. Huh? So if you use model two, you cannot find at the end of this class. Student will be able to hear. Yeah, 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 your condition is gone, your audience is gone. It's acceptable. I mean everybody knows it really, right? Yeah. So let's forget about the, the, the two things. We will be able to describe. The work is very important. C3 right, C3 right, this is C3, this is like C3 right. You need to go through and look at the Bloom taxonomy. what is C3, here, here, here. What are the acceptable works to use? Then look at it, which one suitable, you plug it in. You cannot simply take any work and put it in. Here, but of course, Bloom taxonomy occasionally, every five, ten years, they may further cover, change the works of it, tag it up, remove some. Fine, okay. So, but anyway, that's the easy step. Okay, clear? Okay. So, you need to hunt down the work correctly. Are you with me? Put the work back. Basic concept of work energy and efficiency is the learning outcome state. General learning outcome state. No. There are a lot of types of thermodynamics in here. Okay? A lot. So, without the last statement, uh, chances are you can be a PhD. Clear? Okay? With this one, three times, it will be an undergraduate. Okay? Uh, form 6, you don't, you don't learn up to three times. Here, the way you look at this, people will know it is an undergraduate. Here, three times. At least people in the field, people are not in the field. You learn what is it, you don't know. But people in the field. So, can you see this model? Most people will pass the purple one, you are you are mixed up. Please try it first. Everybody familiar? So how do you formulate a cost of cup? Very easy. Look at the program outcome. Look at your, your, your program outcome basically generate tells you what you should be going. 
teaching them, especially performance indicator. Then look for the look for your taxonomy, C3, C4, whatever, grab that one, put it in, then uh, put in the learning outcome statement, and then put that in the levels. Okay? This one is a comparison between model one and model two. Model one, the audience behavior conditions that we standard. Model two, we just use the standard statement, true, true. Uh, recommendation just use the standard statement. Behavior or action work for modern one is actually break into work and arrow statement true. Two components is good one. So for the work need to be based on taxonomy type, taxonomy level, taxonomy family. Good to have a list of verbs. So best if you prepare a list of verbs. So anybody who is three, you can go check three. What are the three different words that you want to use? You 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 got it. Uh, you think of a word, a word, put one in the word. Oops, so this is one of the what to do. My target is three things like this. Okay, so the so outcome statement, best to discuss with colleagues. Okay, later on I'll show you what we might discuss with colleagues. Remember, this is not the, the curriculum mapping. If you are my down line or down line, I will discuss with you. I, I want to teach them this. Are you okay? Later on, we will see all, all those things. Okay. Condition can use standard statement and degree standard. Best to discuss with colleagues. Depend on the deal and level of studies. Yeah. So it's not doing curriculum review. Most of the time, yes, individual people doing work. True. The, the foreign coordinator will say, okay, you do this, you do this, you do this, you do this, and I should go back and speak up the phone. Throw it back in. Sorry. Your heart will talk. Throw it back in. Or maybe giving the department meeting or let's try first step. Okay, how to write synopsis? So, I'll give you the synopsis before write. So, at least you copy and paste it in your, your, your forms. So, most of the time, you all want to do. This is inverted comma. How to write synopsis is based on after reading a lot of synopsis from your, your colleagues or whatever, and I come up with this up to your value of your formula. Here, up to your. So I break it down into four simple components, which is one, what's the aim of this course? Two, what's the prerequisite for it? Okay. What is the prerequisite cost? Prerequisite doesn't mean that you must take up. Huh? It's nice to take up. Huh? What knowledge or skills you might to be able to follow this course successfully? So that's the prerequisite. <coughs> Contents. What is the content of this course? Most of the time, your synopsis is item 3. True? Your synopsis is not always inside the course, right? Your contents. So contents is not a problem for most of you. The last one, usage. With the knowledge and skill from this course, what can the students do? This class is required for which class? Clear? Break the form of And this is an example. Okay? The first one is the aim. This class aim to teach engineering students the fundamentals of dynamics. Clear? Oh, okay. Go something with it. Maybe you can add it longer, shorter, add it more. But basically, the students read it. Oh, now I know it's the aim of this class. But probably this class name is dynamic, so boring. You, you, can, you, can, you can add in a bit more, whatever, you can explain it. Next one, prerequisite. Although this class does not have prerequisite, most of the time you are saying, oh, no prerequisite done. <laughs> so, a strong fundamental physics and mathematics is important. So students coming for this class, no, oh, I need to know my physics, I need to know my mathematics. Here. Do you think it helps you as a student? Imagine you're a student, you're reading this synopsis. Oh, oh, I come on this class, I'm not going to prepare for the things and things. Knowledge in mathematics, simple calculus and vectors. Oh, I need to my calculus and vectors. And MPT, draw free body diagrams required for this class. Oh, I'm just going to draw free body diagrams. That's it. Clear? It gives you some idea, because you read the synopsis, you think the class not correct. Then this class is teachers, 
or the same standard, right? they are not a problem, right? okay, okay, let's go to the interview. So, what do I do after learning? What happens? Sure, they ask us this question. Uh, yes, you, you can look at this. Students who have successfully completed this course will be able to analyze and design biomedical devices from the aspect of kinematics and physics. Clear? So you can design. You see, when you design something, there's actually a lot of aspects. One of the aspects is the kinematics and kinetics. Here, one of the aspects. So you finish this class, you can design from this aspect. Are you with me? So, okay, you still can learn this kinetics. This knowledge is extremely important for design projects. Here, can you see a complete package? First thing first, know what's the aim, know what you need to know, know before coming for this class. You don't know what is inside the cost, and then you know what you can do after the cost. Here, you see uh, see buses like this before? Yes, no? I've seen before. I've seen before. Something like this. That's how I think I've seen something like this. That's right. Here, up to your hard work. Here, you see some reading contents here, up to you. So, you really finish reading contents, you have scratch it. So, what's this cost all about? Well, because students always like to ask this question. After learning this course, what can I do? What's this course? What skills do I have? Where am I going to use these skills? True? You're answering it in the same process. Okay, next one. How to distribute students and time? This is a big question. There's a lot of different courses, different models, whether it's a design, uh, it is a final year project, industrial training, typical theoretical courses. Uh, typical theoretical courses across different faculty will look different, uh, hands on courses, mixture. So I'm just giving a very brief background. So, for theoretical courses, five weeks lecture will be conducted through non face to face approach in order to build the blended learning environment. There is a requirement called blended learning environment. I'm just pointing this out. Okay. So, you need to have 30% to 60% uh, blended learning basically, computer based. So, somehow, somewhere it goes to five weeks, five weeks to ten weeks of the test. So, you need to put this up. So it's no longer 40 weeks straight lectures. You need to mix and match. The face-to-face -face lecture for each week should be the same as the regular one. So general rule up to your day. Because, because all the faculties you have very, very different models. And the models, you can't really see it's wrong. Because that, that's your needs. Here, but I just want to point out that there's a big opportunity to the Excuse me, this no face-to-face approach, it goes under the uh, preparation time and uh, independent learning? Or? Okay. Non-face-to-face. Okay. Flip learning is non-face-to-face. Example, I give you some video or some notes, you go read on yourself, you learn on yourself, non-face-to-face, and then you come back. Then we have a discussion. That will be the revision student preparation time. Revision is revision to buy something. Uh, student preparation time, you are preparing something. How to put it? Because student preparation time actually can be another common can go to flip learning. Of. Okay, the way I define student preparation time uh, another common. All those things under something called revision. Revision is under student profession. None face to face is better common if you are learning something. None guided. Not a. Or. Not non guided. It's guided learning where I'm not there. None face to face. Okay, read this material. Read that material. I'm guiding you. Okay, but I am not physically there to tell you. So I would tell that that is one kind of thing. 
So basically, I will provide you my email. But if I will tell you, go read, go read, go read is the thing to do. You're still learning. I'm giving you instruction to read. But what you need is reading something completely not in the slippers. So uh, the definition is not so clear. So that's what I mean. I don't know what you're doing. I also make videos myself teaching something. Okay, I would call them non-guided. That is my thing. I would consider them non-face-to-face. Non-face-to-face. I'll put the hours as non-face-to-face. Yes. The actual definition is not so clear. Really, I'm bad. Actually, uh, we have prepared some guidelines to next. So, this is lecture, tutorial, discussion, lab, demonstration. So, one hour education. So, we have one, one to two hours of progression time. And then, face to face, we are preparing uh, 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 YouTube or whatever directly. One hour viewing, hour about five minutes per slide. So, we are giving a guideline. So, one hour, we have about 12 slides. So one to two hours for each hour. So this is a guideline. Guideline. Uh, general rule of thumb. General rule of thumb. Let's let us put it here. Assuming you have three credit hours, I'm uh, just giving general rule of thumb. Uh, the numbers you have to move by a bit. Uh. Assuming you have three credit hours, so basically you should have 120. Student that you have. True? That's compulsory. That one night that you should have. Three, three times 40, 100. In the old days, in the old days, it should be 42 hours lecture. Three times 40, 42 hours lecture. But of course, we are mixing and matching everything. I would, the thing that I, would, I want to see is the face to face plus nine face to face are. Uh, but teaching uh, should be inverted comma around 42. Yeah. Let's say you are 37. Okay. <laughs> if let's say you are let's say around 20, uh, then that would be too much. That may be an indication that you did not teach a student enough. But it also depends. Let's say uh, it is an uh, industrial training. It's basically not face to face, right? Face to face lecture is close to non existence. Maybe you only have one hour per week discussion with the uh, with the what, with the supervisor. The other time you are looking at your own if it is a uh, industrial training. If it's a final year project, maybe you only see a supervisor once once a week or once every two weeks, things like this. Again, so those things are special needs. But assuming it's a charitable cost, so the hours of face to face plus non face to face should be for three credit hours should be around 42. Around 42. Okay? If let's say 45, is it okay? Uh, okay. If let's say 60, then the question comes. Did you make the students learn too much? Are you giving too much of the to the students? Should it be higher credit hours? That's not the So the numbers around that is not really fixed. But what is fixed is the SLT must be a Clear? That is fixed. Yeah, sorry, just when uh, if you have, let's make an example, for example, like uh, two credit course. Okay. Two credits it means uh, uh, 80 hours. Yes. Which is, uh, so basically you have a 14 week class. Yes. Uh, that means overall together with the test, the, the, the overall assessment and things like that, it means uh, uh, 28 hours. That means 52 hours of student learning time on face to face. Okay, so that is. So you have 28 hours of teaching? Yeah. Face to face and not face to face. Like 28 uh, um, teaching lectures and plus the test. Okay. I mean, not the final exam, but I mean the, the following uh, uh, test. Those are, okay, in class, 28 hours. That means that is obviously you have to reach 80. Okay, so there are 52 hours. So that's what that means. 
No, it, it's correct because you have two playing hours, 14 weeks, it's 28 hours. Yes, yes, I mean, you try to, because what, what I mean is that I think I don't know, I do this, I don't know my colleagues, but sometimes when you do the, the student learning time, I mean, the independent learning, you're forcing a little bit the things because you need to reach those. Yes, yes. Because they just say, okay, how, how to do that, how to, okay. how to reach. Let's, let's put it this way. I have actually been a study as to how many hours I need. I crack a few students, chit chat with them. How many hours they do? I set up some days, ask them how much time they spend. Clear? If, if, statement one, they really follow the SLP of EP credit hours. Uh, no, 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 not EP credit hours, sorry. EP hours. They will complain that it is not two credit, it should be three credit or more. Typically, students spend below 40 hours per month per hours. Typically, here. Okay, I did a study. Check that. A survey. Statement one, statement two. Let's assume two credit hours cost. Number of students, and then they will really plan it nicely. Number of students really meeting your AP credit hours is going to be about 50%. Some of them, some of them will be much less. Some of them much more. That's that. So basically, this is just plan. You, you cannot say, oh, everybody will be. That's it. It's not going to be. Think that it's reasonable, number is reasonable, it's possible to plan for most students. Yeah. That's it. Okay. So it also depends on faculty. Some faculty is well known to plan for four years, although they say why can't they allow us to go to other faculty that why can't they see the way to plan it? Because it depends on whether students are uh, smarter, can they use the person? Yeah. 
No, just now I prepared a lot of guidelines, right? Yes. Scary, right? Looks like useless, right? Not useless because everything is loose. You prepare one last thing you can do what I'm asking you to do here. Talk to your friends. It's quite common, quite common that when I talk to students, they say, hey, I learned the same thing from this lecture as well. The people, you don't talk what? Clear, clear. Talk. No stopping. Okay. So talk to your peers, the ones teaching subjects related to you, before and after. Before. Then you think, oh, this is the true edition. In that one, huh? One, two, one, two, I see a lucky notes. Clear. I see exam questions. Talk. Then discuss. After. All you can sit together, and we are all one family family. What you gonna do, what you gonna do, what you do? And basically maybe what she what she's doing and take and transfer to them. You can whatever you see it. That's a talk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But this is the idea. So yeah, the curriculum map now don't lose the data and do. Everybody clear? Done already. Okay, of course, talking, all this is based on the the what the improvement needs to be made by the curriculum review committee. Formulate your CLO. So, what do you do? Remember there's a slide on how to write CLO, right? Look at that. The action verb, type and level, determined by taxonomy guideline. I will write CLO, how to write? Don't know. I need to have a work. What work? Don't know? Check. I should do a C3. I should do a A5. I should do a T4. True? Then I write the work. Taxonomy guideline will tell you that. Content based on discussion with peers. What to write for contents? Remember just now there's a content right a CLO. Talk to them. Mapping to PLO, prefer PLO guidelines. Mapping to PLO, because we are back to PLO, right? The forms map to PLO. Teaching assessment method. What teaching method should I do? What assessment method do? Guidelines again. True? Done. Now, next step. Determine the weekly data now. Cost content. What should the cost content be? Based on benchmark and also CPY. So let's say the, the, the industry says they should learn this program, they should learn this algorithm, they should learn this formula, they should learn this theory. Okay? What do you think? Student learning time, guideline on student learning time. Teaching and assessment methods, prefer teaching assessment theory. Okay? Okay? Then you write your synopsis, guideline to write to write synopsis. By the word, make sure directly translated, update the reference materials. That's it. Clear? Simple? So now the lecturers all got the guidelines in front of them, they know what to do with it. It's actually better for program coordinator than this. You know why? If the lecturer simply put in whatever they feel like they're doing, they pass it back to you, you have to do it. That is why I'm different than That is why I'm different than that. You need to spend a bit of time, invest a bit of time in another bad night, not to make sure a lot of time. That's so that you have less unique people. Okay, here. Lecture right is easy, right? Because everything is prepared already. Watch it, so. Oh, I'm this PLO, okay. This is the key answer, this is the key answer. Okay, here. Go to the last part. Checking. Now everything done already, right? Step four, checking already, right? First thing, define the outcomes by computer. Then prepare guidelines. Then making the corrections. Now checking documents coming. So what do you check? Check the documents using the ESP checklist. Okay, no. When you do curriculum review documents, basically you got two sets of documents. One is called JKPT paper. Okay. One is called the MQA forms. True? The JKPT papers got a lot of attachment things like this. Those, all those things will be checked by ESP. They will say, okay, you fill up this correctly, you fill up this correctly, you got this, you got this, you fill up this attachment, and so on and so on. Yeah? That's what they do. They will check whether you have or you have. Okay? 
Okay? Who's all right? <coughs> the QMAC checklist. Okay, the QMAC checklist is an old checklist. It was developed, I think, in 2020 or was it 2021? Uh, it was obsolete in 2022. Okay. It was used for about one year plus. So the QMAC checklist will tell you this. Borang Satu, perform one. Check for this, check when the name is being filled up, check whether you put it in, check whether the name is putting it in. You can tell you all the little things to check. Okay? The QMAC checklist. And then the third one is QMAC quality assessment. Okay. Basically, quality assessment and checklist is the further karma about the same but completely different. Okay. What is a checklist? Right now, we have a human being. True? If we were to take a picture of her from here, that's what checklist does. They go by forms. Now, you, if you do checklist, I take a form one, put here, checklist, form one, checklist, 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 checklist. Here, quality assessment, they take a picture from here. More difficult, more difficult to do quality assessment but we are still taking the same person. True? Here? Yeah. Later on, I will show you what the quality assessment is. The checklist I will show you. You can probably get mine for those who submitted the curriculum review documents in 2022, you will see the checklist. If you submit now, you may see a checklist, but most of the time, you should see the quality assessment form. So what do you do? Okay, yeah, the checklist, next thing, check for missing information on my post. So that's what check. Template the program outcome, cost outcome, teaching assessment table to check. No, none of you have related this. Okay? You don't see anywhere. I tabulated it and you will see a lot of very, very interesting things here. Things to check. If you don't tabulate that, you should tabulate to check. The cost outcomes are properly written and completely in detail. Okay? So, if you have a PL up there, all the costs are not tied up to the PL. You read through it immediately and you wait to tap to see whether it makes sense or not. True? And then you look at them as a whole, do they fulfill the PL? Example. Uh, let's say your PL is set up about communication communication. Able to present and present and negotiate with somebody. Do presentation and negotiate with somebody. Things are. But if you look at all the cost outcomes, you realize one thing. Most people will focus on presentation. The negotiate that if you if you have that program outcome, you realize that nobody fulfilled the negotiate part. Yeah? If you put them together immediately you will see that it's not fulfilled. Yeah? You don't put them together and you will search up. You know what I mean? That's what you them together. Properly written, properly written, it's not like the, the, the work, the content, the degree, and also completely moving beyond. So, we need to all of that to see whether it be. Most people, when they do this, they will mess this up, especially for those program outcomes with very few cost outcomes. Are you with me? Program outcomes with very few cost outcomes, you will mess this up. Almost definitely. The taxonomy types are the level I go. Can you see a range by year? C2, 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 C3, C3, C4, C5, like this. If you say C5, C6, C2, C1, C3, you got it. Then you start the question. Does this make sense? Here? From here, you can see those things. Type appropriate C. If you see an A in the, the, the PLO, you immediately know something that doesn't look correct. PLO 1. Okay? Fine. The teaching assignment methods are diverse and appropriate. That table just now that I show you know, the program outcome of teaching assessment will make sure that's correct, but it may not be diverse enough. When you look at this, you see, lecture tutorial, lecture tutorial, then it goes like that. That's not time to ask somebody to make some changes. Are you with me? The assessment method also, exam, 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 exam. Okay? So, this is how check. Okay? So you need to formulate this. Okay, this is the 
human quality assessment. Okay? The form. Okay. This is a form. This form. This is item one. Item one. Yeah. Item one we check is we want to check the consistency with MQR certificate. Okay? Consistency renders. When you write a program, there are a few things that's very important. Okay. Your program must be recognized. If your program is not recognized, your students may not be able to find jobs. You know what, what is recognized it should be inside the MQR. Okay? So you check the consistency with the MQR. There are four different things to check. The name of the program, the NEC code, the number of credits and duration of studies. Four things. Are you with me? Four things. You need to check the English version as well as the Malay version. There are some programs I check, or oh, English version looks correct, Malay version runs off. You need to check and make sure that whether there's a dot there, whether they have an extra S there, whether spelling is exactly in the thing, whether it's American English or British English, the way you put it in here. Extra S, less one S is serious issue. Here, here with me. So, all these things. So what do you need to check? You need to go and check the MQR certificate that can be downloaded from the website. You need to check the GKPT paper, although GKPT paper and each of the three documents. So basically, you need to check the GKPT paper matched with the MQR certificates. Are you with me? Okay. If you check the GKPT paper, check the translation accurate, NEC, different NEC manual is logical because you do curriculum review. The NEC code can change, you know. You with me? The NEC code can change. So if NEC code check to see whether it's logical or not. Number of credits, see if fulfill standards, change your credit hours, check if fulfill the standards or not. Program standards. Duration of study, see if fulfill standards. Yeah. So things to check. This is the most important thing to check. Mess this up for all your graduates well. Are you with me? They apply for government scholarship, they will not get. They say that we graduate with this degree with an extra S. The certificate don't have S. MQR says that S. They are finished. The MQR says that graduation credit hours should be 125. How about 134? So, please, you must check this one. Next, we look at the PO, PLO, and COO. So, few things to look at. We check whether there's an like involvement of stakeholders. Okay, is there stakeholders involvement in that? Align to stakeholders' needs. So, I will look at stakeholders and what the stakeholders say is. Example, there's one program that should not be named, mentioned this. The stakeholders comment says that, oh, the credit hour is too, too, too much, too much, too many things to study. Please reduce credit hour, so on and so forth. I can see the comments five to ten different places. Alumni uh, say that, students say that, industry say that, one hour say that, okay, everywhere. I look at the credit hours. They increase the credit hours. Seems like they completely ignore the stakeholders. Or another one, stakeholders says, alumni says, industry says, say this, please increase the, uh, the students' knowledge of software, digital things, so on and so forth. I look at the curriculum, they only have one subject on digital, but in the PR one digital. Clear? So, it seems like you read. In line with the program standards, so they open the program standards and check. PO to PO mapping correct, properly worded, vertically aligned with clusters. In other words, your, your program outcomes and uh, that looks like teamwork, types of teamwork, looks like communication, types of communication, horizontally aligned. No. The way you formulate your PROs, uh, some of them, you can see, uh, you can take this PLO for undergraduate and you can use it for a diploma. Oh, 
horizontal. What is vertically aligned, it doesn't see the level. The PLO is too, too low level. CLO formulated properly. So what documents do you check? Do you check JKPT paper and supporting documents? Look at the meaning the industries, alumni survey, etc. The accreditation commands, the MQA program standards, the COPPA, the wrong one. So make the whole big chunk of documents in there. Next. Curriculum design meeting stakeholders needs. Courses requested by stakeholders increase or reduce in credit hours. Changes in teaching and assessment methods. So things to look at. External examiner comments. That's why I want to say external examiner report. It's a lot of you, a lot, a lot of people did not put the external examiner report on that. Your Lakuan Tauna daily report. What's the comment there? Your form seven. Feedback from stakeholders, meeting with the industry, alumni, feedback, student feedback, C test of student comments, program standards, Bora 1 to 6. Yeah. So to check this thing, you need to read through everything. Because command says you should introduce, let's say, a certain software. Software program ABC. So you need to check whether the form 3 really got program ABC there. Or not. You need to check the form 6 whether teach program ABC or not? Where does it being taught? Clear? Yeah. So, everything they check. Okay, constructive alignment. Each CRO is only mapped to a single PRO. CRO mesh and fully two field PRO. Just now remember that the, the table PRO, CRO, teaching assessment. Teaching method appropriate CRO and, and PRO. Assessment method appropriate taxonomy progressively increasing. Restructuring of the Moran 2 to 6 into so you need to do that to, to check this one. Here. So there are other quality matters. Okay. Remember this is the start of the Kimet checklist. In the Kimet checklist there is certain things and I couldn't group them up together. So other little components. So the profile of the taxonomy is appropriate. Diverse teaching and assessment methods. The SLP is appropriately given, suitable for the task, non base to base blended, should have three references within the past five years. Okay? Clear? So, other question matters. Okay, question and answer. One minute. Will they come back? 
macam mana dia kena tinggal dia dia boleh nak makan itu after they graduate 10 years after graduation dia ask them to come back buyer it would be nice if you have something called something for them I've seen a, a, a department very nice initiative. Know what they have? So every year they will have one to two talks. Invite somebody from the university to come for the talk. Here, so certain smart people, anybody from econs, business, nobody. Yeah, accountancy, nobody from academia outside. Those people, business minders, they can just generate money. Prominent speaker come from overseas. Here, yeah? invite them to come. So these people didn't do that, this fellow says. Send a mass email to all the other guys and says, we have a prominent speaker coming for a talk uh, tomorrow or by next week or so on. Who would like to come for this session? Uh, our group is a bit cramped, a few 30 people. First 30 people fill up. Reasonable? Free from you. Uh, since you are asking to come, they don't charge anything. Uh, anybody who wants food, please pay 20 ringgit to order food for you. Reasonable? 20 ringgit or 30 ringgit, whatever. I smoke my smoke, I remember they said 20 ringgit. I ordered, we ordered some lunch for you. So you can see a lunch and chicken or something. No commitment, nothing. People just come, you, you get what I mean? Then, a few years down the line. Uh, I would like to, here I have an accreditation now, a very critical view. Yeah, come back and help us. Will they come? Will they come? You, you get what I mean? The chances of them coming? Go, they will come. <laughs> you, you, you guys get the idea? Things like this. Or, from a, let's say, uh, alumni society. You want them to have some activities up here? Or, have newsletter, let's say every six months or so, send a newsletter to them. Or the farmer is this, 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 just send them, just send them, let them know. It's not that when I meet you, only I come look for you, you want them to come and wish you all the best. You agree what I say? There's, there's a lot of strategies out there. Okay? There's a lot of strategies out there. So, which uh, is which strategy? But key thing is, if they have good experience here, they go out, they are, they will be more inclined to come back. If they have bad experience here, some people say, I finish, I'm graduating today, I will never walk inside this place ever again. How about students saying that? Uh, <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Parents say, I will never walk back into this place ever again. Okay, clear? So basically treat them well, treat them well, I mean, well as in respect them, good as a person. This is so much now. Oh, you want this? I don't think I'm I don't think I'm ready. I think you cannot, uh, cannot make it right. So treat them as a person, person, respect them, that's it. And then when they graduate, organize activities, come back, chit chat. You, you get what I mean? It means time to build that relationship. You start from zero, really. Zero. <laughs> it's not easy, bro. It's not easy. Actually, I look nice. It's easier. Industry is more difficult. What should I tell? What's it done for me? Like our friend doing Korean. <coughs> how, how is she going to convince somebody from the tourism, Korean tourism, to come and for a meeting? That is not so straightforward. Oh, the, it's a requirement to interview that chit chat them. Uh. Okay, let's put it this way. If, if, uh, if you can't even get an alumni of the industry to come back to the for accreditation, what does this require? They're not interested. Yeah, it, 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 it sort of reflects that like really screw up in time. Sort of like that. So 
Okay. This one cannot see. For those of you can see that, try to see that. I think you don't really need to see much. Keyword starting MQR. MQR. That's it. MQR. Three simple words. Malaysia qualification register. Okay. Key in the word. Okay. No, no, no. I don't want to type. I don't want to type MQR Malaysia. Okay. Because I want to show you that you can search for it. Then you can see something called Malaysian qualifications register. Okay. Here. Of course, you will have to remember the whole name all the better. Then you click inside. Comes here. What do you do? You go for public or government institution. You type in the word university. Okay, this is in English. Let's look at English first. Uh, French, 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 no French. French. Uh, what's the name of the program? French language. Type control F. I type the word French and come out. French. Okay. <coughs> can you see? Can you see French coming out here? Control plus 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 plus. Can you see French? Okay. So Bachelor of French Language and Linguistics. Is this the name of the program? Yes. Okay. So it's a bachelor's degree. It's 125 credit hours. Yes, no. <coughs> so it's a zero two three one language acquisition. <coughs> you have been accredited since twenty seventeen. Twenty seventeen, na. Yes, no. <coughs> when did you start existing? <coughs> when did you <yours> exist? <coughs> Oh, then you could have a you Okay. You you only existed in 2017. Before that, you didn't exist. No, we have existed. No, fresh, fresh. This day. Control that day. Sorry, I can't see, so I'm going to make it smaller. Okay, so I see Bachelor of French Language and Linguistics, starting 21 stroke club. Okay, over here you need to see something. I want to show you something. Can you see this one? MQA slash SWA. Can you see this? This is a number here. Number is old story. Old story. If you see your program number is old story, uh, make sure that your program is this. Has an MQA slash SWA here. If it's the old one, you, you may have problem. Then click inside, that's a problem. So, okay. Ba, 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 ba. So it's Bachelor of Language and Linguistics with Honors of French Language, Previous Equivalency. So the old name is this one, true? Uh, Bachelor of Languages and Linguistics with Honors French Language, say yes, yes. I know you have a problem. So you existed since 1998. Here? Yeah? So here's the So three years, six months. You have progress three years, six months? Say yes. Here? Yeah? Can you see the things I checked? If it's four years, uh, I'm sure the best. <laughs> Understand? Please open this one and check. Also, oh, it's a full time class. Uh, da, 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 da. Now, what do we do? We go for Basel Layu, Malay language. We go to university. Hey, okay, over. Okay, still here. Control F. Guarantees. Okay, so Sajana Muda Basel and Linguistic Guarantees, yes? 125, okay, that's good. Click open. Please check, please check for your own program. Level 6, uh, uh, level six you check out this one. Level 6 means it's a bachelor degree, language acquisition again. This is a whole name, and this is since 1998. 
three years and six months. Okay, that. Here, check the English and the Malay. There was one program, I checked the English name correct, I checked the Malay name not correct. That's the place. Check, please check. Anybody else? What program are you from? Engineering. What? Engineering. Engineering, ah. Uh? Engineering boring, ah. Uh? <laughs> I check it frequently. How about you? Uh, China. So there's one study, 125. Level 6 existed since 1998, three and a half years. Let's change back to English.
assuming that all documents have been done and everything went through, then, then what happened? Then you go to KPP. It's, it's, not, it's, not, it's not finished yet. Huh? You go to KPP. The ministry will check through and say whether they approve it or not. Because there are some programs who manage to pass through Mashallah Sankanawa, pass through the accreditation, they will give it KPP. Clear? KPP may not want the program to run. It is possible. Okay? So it doesn't mean that all other art go through everything that was much more And even if you go through that, then it's time to hunt down students. There are some programs you plan to go through KTT, <coughs> the student take close to zero. And they normally explain why they don't approve it, or they just say not Oh, they, they usually don't say they don't approve. They will say KIT. Frozen forever. Permanently <laughs> <laughs> frozen. But uh, usually they give it. The, the program, I mentioned this now, that it's not a small program to help out. The problem is, they pass this command. Some other universities are offering similar programs. But, there are students and faculties under 50%. Do you get it? Programs similar, this is like in existence. The employability is below 50%. So, what's so special about program? This is, uh, I'm curious about it. I mean, this kind of process and all these passages are uh, just for the public university or for all universities, even the private ones that go through it that they want to offer it to them. Okay, so not all the processes are private. Some of them. Not all. Uh, some of them, yes. The process will be slightly different. Okay, in university Malaysia, we have something called swipe. So we do our internet accreditation. So it helps us to expedite certain processes. If we were to go through MKA to get the accreditation, the process would be a bit longer. Actually, on paper, they claim that process is a bit shorter, which is true because their, their assumption is everything is in place before you come and see us. Over here, most of the documents being submitted is not really so uh, it seems like a process. If you insist all documents are in place before you submit, then you'll take a longer time for you to submit. So processes, I'm hundred percent sure I need they need for new program for new program, you must do promotion KPT, you need a ministries of the as well. Planning for the for the government, so they don't want too many people producing too many electricity. So they take control.
time it's much faster. And then they do this through command program. They are very experienced. They do one program, next program, next program, next program, next program. So they build up on the experience. <coughs> if you were to, 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 to do everything once, and once like this, it would take a long time. If you do the same thing five times, ten times, you will be very much better. And then they deal with the ministry people, they know the ministry people very well. They frequently go to the ministry people. Take a picture. 